Yo! Hey, Will, I'll be honest with you, man. Now that we got the music on the front of this thing, beyond the fairway, what's happening, Dougie Fresco? Henny Koyak, Will Lowry, we out here. But now that the music wheel's on the front end, it make me kind of, I feel like a rapper for somebody about to come in and come out just like, uh, I, we need Will Lowry to spit over this, Kobe. Go ahead, cut that, Coles. Yo, what's happening, everybody? Welcome back Beyond the Fairway Podcast. Uh, it's been a week. It's been a week. Henny, you're in a box. Will, you're where you're mm. supposed to be. Henny, where, what, let's just start with Henny. You got your arms folded, Henny. I'm getting a lot of like, um, a lot of pissed offish right now from you right now. Like, don't mess with me, Doug. Like, I feel like I got an X over my head, but I'm gonna still mess with you just a little bit. <laughs> uh, naturally, I would be shocked if you didn't. That would weird me out. Uh, yeah, I'm. You know what? I call this energy saving mode. I'm at the Players <laughs> Championship. I'm on site. I traveled in from London yesterday. I didn't get a lot of sleep. Um, I've already been at it on the 17th hole today doing preview pieces. I've got like seven more preview pieces to do today. So I'm in our trailer here at the TV compound. It's actually really nice to get some sun. My hair doesn't love the humidity. Um, <laughs> I'm enjoying being back in America. I have missed it. I've missed, I text Ben, my husband, who's American, uh, as I was driving up from Orlando and I was like, you know what? I have to give it to you. American gas stations win. They are by far superior <laughs> to English gas stations. As I was like getting all of my pop chips and my Celsius and my like snacks. And, yeah, I missed it. Yeah. It's been good. Yeah. Our gas I'm station, enjoying being back. Our gas station so dope. We have gas station sushi. Imagine that. Yeah, which, which is not <laughs> dope. Like, <laughs> no. that's, that's something else. I have to say, I've never eaten, like, those dog, the hot dog things that you have rotating for, like, 30 but, hours in a row. Well, first of all, that can't be safe. That is a delicacy. No, that's a delicacy. No. Shit. Come on. Whoa, 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 whoa. It ain't a, it ain't a, nov it ain't a novelty. Hold on. Will, Will's a vegetarian, so he's never going to stop and eat a gas station. Like I'm, I'm a pescatarian, so I feel you there. Yes. I'm black. I'm blackitarian, and I stop still to this day to the QT and give me a hot dog off the rollers. I don't care. I'm don't, not that. Bougie. Don't that. Don't that thing just look like it has BGs all over it, bubble guts all day. Like no. it just. Yes, it, it does. That's how I grew yeah. up. Yeah. Man, y'all way too. You too good for a gas station hot dog. Oh, on, no, I, I am. I, I'll take a. Come on, I used to take a. Uh, cholesterol in a roll from Wawa's with all the egg in hey, it. Hey, Wawa. Hey, <laughs> and apparently, but my the husband's gonna ever. like go off on me. I can't go with that because he's a sheets guy. He's from PA, he's from Pittsburgh. Yeah, you, and he only... has a sheets mug that he drinks his coffee out of every day. If I were to even say Wawa in our house, he would just walk out. Do what? 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 Really? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> hey, I, I tell you this though. I, I do want to know this, Henny. Since you're there on the players, and I, I know what it's like being on site. You got you got your assignments. You got so much to do. Are you enjoying any of the festivities there? Because the players, is kind yeah. Of like, okay. Players I didn't know if you're doing. Yeah. I no, I, I am. Doing. I'm just like. I have to keep my energy turned way down between yeah. doing the pieces and seeing the people, players, media members, friends. It's all good stuff. It's all great people. And I love doing my job. But in between those segments, because it's such a long day, I just have to keep myself like turned on energy saving mode. Otherwise, I don't make it through because I'm very much like I'm a real <laughs> introvert. Like I get my energy from being silent on my own in a dark space. Like, that's yeah. where you at right now. You should be full of energy when you get up out of here today. No, because you're not letting me be silent, are you? Exactly. So. You got, yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta get that that energy back over here. But it's the crazy part on Sunday. It's such a major crash. So I get on the energy reserve mode. Like it's like it's like an iPhone. You just gotta, you gotta have your mode. Just just a little bit of reserve. On you Sunday, you're on the one percent. You're on the one percent. <laughs> you keep going, 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 going. Crash. All right, <laughs> let's get on to the serious stuff. Last week, we had Wyatt Worthington in, and that was such a intense, deep conversation that I was very grateful for. And we had such incredible feedback from everyone. So thank you all so much for listening in and showing us love and giving us feedback. And I know that Wyatt appreciates that too. Um, but let's have a little reflection on that conversation, because one thing that really stood out for me that we could have talked on for ages, and we did, and we had to cut half of it out, <laughs> was the 
the concept around what it takes to be successful and that tipping point between the struggle and having that motivation and that desire to do everything and get out there because you're struggling versus having that financial backing to be able to go out there and play with freedom. And we were sort of going back and forth on what well, do you need that? And I've, I guess my perspective is I've had times in my life where I've really, really, really struggled and that's always driven me. And then I've had times in my life where I've been successful and I joined like an amazing country club and was surrounded by the best of everything. And I really struggled. Like I lost my motivation. I lost that like drive to do whatever it takes. And so it's really interesting for me sometimes actually working out here on tour and seeing that drive not come from a place of like damage would probably be the right mm. word or like pain. So someone like a Justin Thomas or John Rahm or not to say they haven't struggled at times in their own way in their lives, but like that drive to win against everything at all costs, they just have that innate in them. And I don't think much would change that. So that's sort of my my preamble and i'm gonna see what you guys think <laughs> i mean it, it's it's there is a degree there because you know when you're when you're playing when you're playing for money versus playing for trophies are two different things and i and i do give mm. i do i do give a lot of credit to the guys on the pj tour who have the bread they got all the guap all the lettuce mm -hmm, all, 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 all the cheddar they they can have and they still have that drive to play for trophies but th there is a bit of comfortableness when you have that when you when you first get that little check maybe from a sponsor you're like whew, I can breathe now. But however, how do you not get caught? Great question. How do you not get caught up in that? I got a little money now. I can you know I can you know pay for some things. I can eat the way I I dreamed of eating. You know when I'm on the road. So I, I that's that's a good question. I don't I don't know. But when you were playing, how did you, but how did you get that shit back though? Henny, like, how did you, you know, when you joined the country club, like, how did you get that? Mm. How did you get it back? The honest answer is I don't think I did, but I channeled it into <laughs> something else because I, st I stopped playing because uh, I couldn't make a cut. And then I was injured and then I couldn't make a cut. Um, I know in all seriousness, though, I, one of the big reasons I stopped playing was my injury and it's been interesting seeing other players on the LPGA and PGA Tour have that same injury, but be able to continue because they have the financial means to be able to take a couple years out and then get back to it. Whereas but, I didn't have that at the time. So I was like, I got to go get a job. And then, But then I sort of channeled that um, fire into yeah. being the best I could be at my job now. But but Doug, like even Doug, when you were playing like the mini tour, I mean you had some wins, uh, not having shit. You you sleeping back in your car too, but I mean, I I, I just oh, when I think about you know what we're talking about with Wyatt, and I remember like losing my last six hundred dollars, you know playing. At a, I remember going to an event. I only had like seven hundred in my account. I remember shooting like seventy five thousand for two days, and I remember just being broken, like crying. I'm in the car crying over the steering wheel like i don't know what is next for me and to be honest that's kind of mm. like the moment that i punked out like it was one of those things where mm. i was actually playing really good golf but like you gotta remember my story is a little different than a lot of people's i went to business first and quit right so i got a resume you know i got i got accolades and, and all this stuff i could fall back on and, and get back to the to the office so for me it was it was like the lowest of the low because you took you left this comfort space. I had money and retirements, and then I went and played golf. I was playing good finally, and then I lost everything, like all of it, gone. Mm -hmm. And uh, that realization of going back to work for me, that's when it hit. But what I find just heartbreaking is we've all been to that ultimate low, that low spot. Mm -hmm. And for Wyatt to have contemplated what mm -hmm. he was going to leave behind because he was going to take his life. Um, and and if I'm being still a million, a thousand, hundred percent, or keeping it a buck like Wyatt was saying, being as close as I am to Wyatt yeah. and not knowing yeah. that that's what he was going through and experiencing. Mm -hmm. I think, honestly, in the episode, you know, when he's telling the story, I kind of wipe a tear away. 
And it was because I felt like a horrible friend. Yeah. And, you know, how many times any or Will is like people going through things and you just have no idea. Yeah. And, but that's supposed to be your family, your friend, but, your homie, your ace. And that's, that's, that hit me hard. It's tough because like I struggled with depression when I stopped playing and again, after I gave birth and that was one of the big reasons to move to England. Cause I was having sort of similar thoughts to Wyatt. I remember being at the Northern Trust and I was looking out at the sea, which was like a choppy day at the Hudson. Oh, it's not the sea, sorry, the river, the Hudson. And I was just so low that I was like, oh, I could just dive in there and go under yeah. and it would just take me and yeah. it would be calm. Oh, yeah. so relief. Yeah. And I was like, oh shit. Like I, I had to tell Ben, I was like, but I'm not in a good space here. Like we need to move out. So I've struggled with depression like on and off. But whenever mm. I have had those episodes, the last thing I want to do is talk to anyone. Like you go right. so insular, not and not really by choice. Like it's just, I think it's just the way that that affects you. Like you don't really want to but, but, reach out but, and be sociable. And but when you speak and when you speak on reaching out, you know, typically as us being golfers or even people or those who are not in a game professionally, sometimes golf is the sanctuary, is the outlet. But mm. when when golf is when when golf is not our outlet, when I'm telling you when I'm lost, I am completely lost and I have nowhere to go. And and I guess mm -hmm. the question is, how do you have that mental health maintenance to where you won't get into that spot again? How do you mental how, health maintenance? That's that's heavy, Will. Yeah. No, but that's such a good point because I currently am on a mental health maintenance plan. So like <laughs> I've I. <laughs> I've was that, that is that on and off? Where'd you get that from? Sheets or Wawa's? <laughs> that, that's, that, that's in the sheets mug. It in comes with a collector's set. Yeah. <laughs> hey, but I tell you, I tell you this. Now we're going to kind of shift a little bit. Speaking of you know competitive nature, you know we uh, perhaps maybe his competitive uh, nature got the best of him. I uh, want to bring up Kamayu Johnson in uh, his uh, his uh, happenings that he did over the past uh weekend or week excuse me not weekend week over at the api on a palmer invitational um doug i mean i i, I let you explain it. you were you were uh on site hey, last on the, week. How, well i wasn't on site i was in the i was okay. on the broadcast he was on a broadcast. Fair enough. We broadcast okay um i was man, here's the story uh you know the first part of the story is the, the group was on the clock right so players nick hardy um i think it was it was Kyle was, uh, Westmoreland was playing with him the first round. I can't remember. But I know Nick Hardy was for sure. They left to go play the 10th hole. Kamayu took four shots to get on the green there at nine. As he's on the green putting, the, being on the clock, the other group went to try to, you know, make up time and go ahead and tee off. Kamayu three putted. So if he's on in four and three putts, that's this many, seven. Kamayu uh, shared that he had made a six, you know. So the guys didn't see it in the group. They get to a shot link. So this is what happened from my seat. Shot link had him for a seven. So I always assumed that he made seven because that was a shot, shot link score. Gets to the scores tent um, and um, says he made a six. Starts arguing about it. And, um, you know, it's one of those things where, you one, when you're on a sponsor's exemption, number one, you shouldn't be very adamant. And number two, when your playing partners leave the green and you say you made one less than camera evidence says that you made, you, yeah. Yeah. you can't really fake the funk. Yeah. So that's the story. That's the story. Kamayu Johnson signed for one less score than he actually made. He made a seven. They checked the tapes and saw it. But then, Will, that, this is, to me, when the stories start. Because this went wild. I mean, Monday Q posted it up, um, posted the story with Nick Hardy as the source. And on Twitter. Start, clarify, yeah, Monday Q on Twitter. Yeah, Monday Q on Twitter posted the story so that everybody had some clarity. Because I was looking to see how many Kamaya had missed the cut by, respectfully, just to see what he shot. Like, okay, how many, you know, because... Previous time he played this term, he shot 14 over. He shot seven over this time. So I was, progress. And then you look up and see DQ by his name. And then Will, you know, and I'm, I'm not trying to 
I'm not trying to hurt anybody's feelings. Let's just be honest. Kamayu Johnson, we've talked about in previous seasons. He's played in five PGA Tour events. He's finished DFL and DQ. Still to this day, he's never beat anyone in a competition. That's not fake. That's not shade. That's not smoke. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. Now, now the question moving forward is, is Kamayu Johnson the Black Patrick Reed? Ooh. Damn, Ooh. Doug. <laughs> Damn. Ain't no I said it's a question. I didn't say I, I, I'm saying this. I'm saying, is that what well, we're going to oh, equate let me, Kamayu Johnson with now moving forward? Is he the Black me, Patrick can, Reed? Can I, me, no, no, can I hide me, somewhere? Hold, hold on. Hold on. I, you know what? He He's not the Black Patrick Reed because let me tell you why he's not. Patrick Reed obviously has been labeled as a cheater. There's been allegations. There's been some infractions, questionable mm -hmm. infractions. We know yep. that. Respects. Reason why he's not the Black Patrick Reed because Patrick Reed always had a chance to go to the next week to erase that cloud over his head. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick Reed, every week from the time that he was labeled as cheating, he had a chance to better his record by having a clean <laughs> tournament. Hey, it's four, it's four tournaments in a row that Patrick Reed has not had infraction or had any type of speculation. That's fair. I get that. No, Kamayu and... Kama Kama Johnson does not have that luxury. And to be honest, Kamayu is not good enough to have that cloud over his head that he's a cheater. He just, he's not, he, I mean, he, now granted, he's been working hard. He's been working his ass off. When Made some cuts to, on, on the PJ Tour Latin America. He's two, two out of three cuts on the PJ Tour Latin America. Uh, but when you have these sponsors and, and real estate on your shirt, that comes with an incredible amount of responsibility. And scrutiny. And, and scrutiny. That's why we're going to get your ass right now, Kamaya. Look, regardless if he cheated or not, I'll tell you one thing. This next sponsor's exemption it's gonna be a while. I can promise you that. Well, for him or for black folks? Both, and that's the and that's the damn sad part. But that you can even ask the question with a straight face because somehow those two things are damn correlated. That's and that's what I've been talking to a lot of people about. Will is is like, did Kamayu mess up ops for black folk, like all blacks in golf? And it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. How how is how is he the Al Sharpton of of the tour now? Uh, because he, he has the most logos and he's being seen and et cetera, et cetera. So, and, and, and Henny, that's the, that's one of the things where, what's the expression? A rising tide raises all ships, but what about a, a low, a, a, a descending tide or a rescinding mm -hmm. tide? It does the same thing. It lowers the, the space for the, for the ships. Maybe, so, that's, I, him, maybe, I, maybe that's him calling, telling you his, his, his point of view now. No, that's the dentist appointment that I'm late for because uh, we had to redo the, the the recording time. Look, sorry, Dr. Moyer. I apologize. I'm not coming. Nine o'clock. That you know, was when I was supposed to be there. <laughs> Matter of fact, I'm going to get charged for this damn episode. All right, I'm pissed now. But so, like, but Henny, I mean, have you, when you were playing, did you, did you know who they were when you were on tour? Oh, mm. uh, Mm. Yeah. Yes. I personally didn't care because I was like, if you want to do that to yourself, we've all got to look at ourselves in the mirror at the end of the day, right? So if you want to do that to yourself, that's cool. I, when I heard what Kamaya did, I was really disappointed because I don't know him, but similar to what you were saying is that he is the black poster boy, right? Of the APGA triumph who's playing in PGA tour events. And you said he's sponsored up and branded up and, um, it, I think that makes it extra disappointing because he is so visible and he was that guy. He was, for whatever reason, rightly or wrongly, he was painted He's, as that guy. He stamped. And he so got, got I think we, but he, sh he, he's a black man, right? He knows that we, sh we all know that when we're in these spaces and we're breaking new ground and we're doing new things and we're visible, you almost have to be extra extra careful because you know that there are young black boys and black girls looking up to you so and there's not many of you to look up to right mm. there's only a, a handful so it's not like a patrick reed where okay you don't like him that's fine look at however many other golfers <laughs> who look like you and you can relate to however many hundred there are whereas for young black boys for looking up at kamaya you're like all right what well, you are on the pg that's heartbreaking because you're like i don't have another 100 200 guys on the pga tour to look up to and that's where you know i think that 
Tony Fee now is just so phenomenal. And that's why I love his story so much because he's just such a good dude and he's shown the right way to go about things. And prior to that, obviously, Tiger Woods, that, you know, responsibility that he had and the mantle that he held over black, white, Asian, whoever, young kids. It's, that's, I think my point is that that's really powerful and that's a very privileged position to be in. And so therefore you have to look after that and realize that and understand that and take care of that. Yeah, it, but, I mean, but, it, but, but here's the thing, Will, like, and, and, and this is what I, I don't understand. Regardless of the infraction, we're talking about one shot. Mm. He missed the cut by like six. Right. Why even mm. argue the number if the result is the same? But my thing is this, though, and, that's, and that leads to the question, Doug, what are you cheating for? Like what's the what, why you know, why why which is you why I think which is also why I kind of sort of believe the story because think about this he hits it right off the tee like a hundred or two hundred and forty yards which is extremely short which says he hit it horribly chopped it out to eighty five yards chopped it out the green side right now he's on the green land three he gets on the green he he hits a putt from like twenty five feet one from five feet then another one from four feet then another one from three feet. At that point, and that's back at the clubhouse, you know, that's the ninth green. I will say, it's a moment where things could have got a little fast for the homie. Like, oh, my, he's, there's some embarrassment. There's a big number. I'm trying to make the cut. I played a good first round. He played a good first round. Um, and things got a little fast. I'm not saying that he cheated, but I am saying that there was an opportunity in that moment where things could have moved. But what pisses me off about this entire damn story is the fact that this individual tried to have an attitude about him making a six. Then he got an attitude. Then he blamed it on his caddy. He said the caddy was keeping his scorecard. Let me tell you something. I don't know how many caddies keep the scorecard in golf. I, mean, I know it's a thing. Some players do it. But now, now he can scapegoat somebody else for a mistake that falls on him. I don't know the story. It's what I'm hearing. At the end of the damn day, he was confronted about the number yeah. and kept an attitude. I'm also going to give him a little, like, I think when people do that, they're in, uh, we were just talking about people in dark places and struggling. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I don't think that comes from a happy place that behaviors. So I think right. there must mm -hmm. be some stuff so, going on for okay. him, which I have, you know, empathy for. Which one was the bigger double bogey? Him cheating and saying that he did. He 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 telling Shot Link him was a allegedly, liar. Allegedly, allegedly cheating. Okay, him allegedly cheating and you know calling Shot Link a liar, or the PR move that he put out and said, "I didn't finish. What was it? I didn't finish. I didn't finish grade school." No, he said, "I didn't. I didn't graduate. I never learned how to count to seven. I'm I'm baffled over the PR that I'm I'm baffled over that response. And I'm glad you went there because that was the dumbest thing he could have posted. Try to play up the fact that he didn't go to school when he has his GED. And and play dumb and into the whole thing. But he also did issue another statement saying that he values the integrity of the game and that the Which moment got hot and unfortunately he miscounted. Look, I don't believe look, I believe that you can miscount. I just believe you got to be a little more open to the possibility of miscounting by your playing partner. That's that's really more my... Don't be a hard ass, especially when you in the wrong. Right. Kamayu was wrong, period. You cannot argue against it. But to be a hard ass and stand on your horse, that's, that's disrespectful. But I tell you what, one thing that mm. wasn't disrespectful this week, Henny, is this whole notion of these elevated events. Because Bay Hill did not disappoint last week. I was on the call there for PJ Tour Live. I was like screaming. I even stayed after, I was on 14 on, on uh, featured holes. I was there through the end of the championship because there was like six lead changes in the last nine holes of golf. And it was awesome. And shout out to Kirk Kitayama for getting that W. He's melanated. That's what I was rooting for. Oh, so you just room for melanated now. It's, it's not even... And coming down the stretch, elevated event. He's never won before. He got a couple second place finishes. I'm. I, it was like 2008. We didn't know nothing about Obama, but I'm I'm voting for the black dude. That's oh, how I felt. Oh, for oh so, so you're, you're saying that if it's elevated, it got to be melanated. I'm no, just kidding. I love that. Thank <laughs> you for saying <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm a fan of the elevated events because I like when it brings all the best players on the PGA Tour together. I like that competitive nature, the fact that, as you said, that league can switch around. Doing the back nine on Sunday, I think it makes it more exciting. And I think that depth of leaderboard is 
what we want to watch golf for. But then I also enjoy the non-elevated events because that's when you get the great stories, like the Chris Kirk coming through with his sobriety and winning again, and you get all the emotions, and you get the what's his name Cole. Um, is his what's his first name Eric Cole who then Eric got engaged and he had a second, tough yeah. time and came in second so I think you unearth I used to love going to the smaller events on tour sometimes so I think you unearth the the nice story so I think both elevated and non elevated have their own plus points I, but Will you're shaking your head I, I mean I'm with you, you because I'm with you because yes the, the non elevated events you can have the opportunity to establish that hard string with some of those players. I get that. But I'm always, you know, how mine works. I'm always thinking from a business standpoint. Sponsors aren't liking this non-elevated opportunities that may be presented to them. I mean, because you got to think, if a sponsor is saying, hey, you know, I want to put some money toward the PJ Tour, I want to ha have an event, am I having a opposite field event that's not completely opposite field? You know, think I mean, about you, that. You can't mm -hmm. tell me the, the event this weekend uh, down in no. Puerto Rico wasn't overshadowed by Bay Hills. That's just a fact. <laughs> who who won in Puerto Rico? Willie Mack. I don't know. Like <laughs> uh, the young, yes. the young guy. Can it, can I, I don't know how to say his surname. I know no, what it is, but it was Nico Echeverria. Nacho Nico. Echeverria. Thank you, Nico. Nico. Yes, that, but you know, for the record, they put that in the group chat and text. So thank you, Colby, our producer, who. <laughs> bailed us out my point was no why one are you going to be that way no one knew like we're right. talking about off you, you can't tell me that the sponsor of that event is super happy about having an that, event but, like bay hill the same week to will's point but but, but that's the same and that's the, that's the point like how are sponsors and people who want to have a relationship with the tour are they going to be that much more hesitant because i'm not getting the type of player that i want <clears throat> at my at my opposite field event you know <laughs> So Let, I, let's I, talk about the schedule, actually, because we got we have Bay Hill, we got players, we're right in the meat the of spot. the season. There we got we Masters, we got Masters coming up, and then the week after the Masters, we got the Will Lowry Junior Championship, oh, a, a brand thing, new AJGA event. It's what I do, a brand new AJGA event at Carolina Trace Country Club. April 14th to the 16th. Congratulations, oh. Will, on your AJG event. That's super that, cool. I'm so happy for you. That, that was a great segue, Henny Koya. That's, <laughs> that's what I do. Uh, yeah, that's man. Why they we, pay me the big bucks. That is why you pay the big bucks. I, and I love man. it. I love it. Um, but yeah, so, you know, we get That's why they gave us a chaperone. <laughs> <laughs> right. But uh, yeah, we got a, we got an AJG event. Um, you know, I, I've been in, um, you know, uh, conversation with those guys at AJGA, Jason Edson and those guys, and and uh, shout out to Jason Edson, who, you know, really kind of brought the idea of possibly, you know, having, you know, having me host the AJGA event, you know, and, and I was just peppering him with a lot of questions, like, you know, what is AJJ doing, AJGA doing to kind of change that narrative of, you know, having more black and brown in, in, in these tournaments? Because when I was coming up as a junior, AJGA, you couldn't really afford you know, it was, it was one of the top top tier events that if if you if you play AJGA, you already had a little bit of bread. So how is AJGA, uh, you know, uh, what are some of their efforts and, you know, growing the competitive space of golf amongst black and brown? And, you know, they're, and they're, re they're really making grave efforts to do just that. You know, they have the ACE, the ACE, uh, the ACE Grant Foundation, which is which is one of the dopest foundations that are helping. Uh, replenish and 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 paid for uh, kids who come from a different clubhouse to want to play in AJJ events. So uh, I'm honored to be to have host and and they allow me to put my stank on it. So um, I I, you know, I have a question because that yeah we got to talk about the stank. That was a beautiful. I'm not having any negativity from you, Douglas Smith. Ooh. Ooh. Negativity. I'm gonna. Sh Ooh. Ooh. I'm shutting you down. I'm getting two fingers pointed at me right now. You know what? I'm going on mute. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so that's probably for the best. Um, I want to know. <laughs> He looks like ludicrous doing a music video right now. It, 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 it does. It, uh, it like, <laughs> we look like we're 03 all over again. <laughs> um, let, let's be real for a minute. Friend okay. to friend. Okay, how did it feel to have your own tournament? That's crazy. Uh, you know like, what? Give me the emotions. Fr friend to friend, it, it, felt, it felt good because 
again, I say, you know, it's all about bringing visible equity to golf. You, you can't be what you don't see. And if you look at, if you look how I move strategically, I'm not saying no to a lot because I want to, I hope to be that spark for somebody that may want to go down that particular career path, whether it is TV production, whether it's writing screenplays, whatever it is to know that you can do just that. Um, I was quite shocked. I, I, I felt good about it, but I was more hurt. <laughs> I, I was I was more hurt because a bit of a crab in a bucket with my peers, right? Some of my peers didn't really congratulate me. Like, congrats, Will. Oh. I, have, I, I still have yet to hurt, hear from quite a few people. So now I kind of know where I stand. Bronco. Really? So, yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of hurt about that because I really why? Want, hold on, why are you hurt? Because I really want this thing to be an all inclusive thing. Yeah, I granted my name's on it, but. I feel like this is a cultural milestone. But has everybody anyway. seen the announcement that you have this? I'm just saying. Better has everybody that. seen it? Has yeah. everybody seen you were, it? You're on well, mute. Why are you unmuted? I'm, I'm on mute? No, him. Oh, him. oh yeah. Why, why All right, exactly. Muted? Oh, that's ludicrous up here. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. Like, but, hey, you, but you say, how's everybody seen it? But, Doug, you have told me that people have called you inquiring about how Will got this. But it was more how. That's, that's that's not disrespectful. Saying, man, how did this happen for for Will? That's not. It is. How's it, it disrespectful? It's, it's, it's. I think they're it doing is. their research. Okay, no, so they were like, we all right, were, never mind. We'll, we'll talk about that on the telephone. Willie, Will, this is your flowers, man. I think it's dope that that you have an event. I just want to know, like, what with the event, like, what do you add to it, or how are you gonna put that Will Lowry on it to make it a little more. A little more, and, and, you know what I'm saying? Less AJGA, melanated. more melanated. There you right. go. How are you gonna and, make it more melanated? And that's what we're and that's what we're kind of we're planning through right now. We have a little short run, runway with this this year's event. Hopefully next year is a little, uh, you know, extended a little bit further out. But uh, yeah, I mean, just finding ways to make this thing cultural, you know, culturally relevant, if that make any sense, you know. So we're we're in the middle of trying to figure that out now. You know, I can't I can't put too much Will Lowry on it because I don't want to scare too many people. But <laughs> but you know, I did want to make this a a significantly different event from traditional AJGA uh, golf tournaments. So I would love to have both of y'all there. Hint hint. I don't know how much you guys have charged me. I, either way, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, but you know, we can we can we can figure something out. But the whole goal is is just to. Uh, just the, you know, I, one of the things I told AJG, I was like, man, I got to have four exemptions for my underrated, for my underrated kids. You know, uh, you know, Jay Rich and those guys are underrated. Rob Roxborough, we're in the middle of having a conversation. You know, what kids that we're going to pick and you know to to play in this AJG event. And I'm just happy the fact that I have an event on the AJGA platform to where I can provide opportunities to those again who come from a different clubhouse. That's the whole point, you know, and. And hopefully we can get a Doug Smith HAJ event, Henny Koyak HAJ event, so we can extend the arm, extend the the uh, the gratitude and, and gracefulness to bring people in to to put their talents on display on another platform. That's all it is. Yeah, and you know I think that's really important because that's speaking to what you said earlier, and I know you said you guys are going to talk about it outside of the podcast and hash it out and whatever, but actually it's valid that you felt disappointed by people not reaching out to you and I think that often comes from a mindset from other people of maybe it's a systemic thing right I've seen mm. it as a woman where you think there's only one spot in the system for a woman or a person of color or whoever it may be right um and I think Will you're coming from like an abundance mindset where you're saying like no I don't think that way I'm thinking that if I can do this, then you all can do this because Man. you're big on community. Yeah. But I think that mindset does come out from the fact of like, yeah, shit, I'm scared because if Doug, ha if Will has this event, then that means that I can't have my, I can't do that nah. because damn, he's got that now. Whereas it shouldn't be that way. But I, I think that's a product of the system that we haven't yeah. quite figured it out yet in terms of that true like open the gates to let everyone in let's actually yeah. be inclusive i don't think that they've created the space for that just yet so i think people speak from fear a little bit and, and that's the thing yeah i'm a big believer there there's there's famine thinking and there's a uh, feast thinking you know you know famine is where it's you're sketchy you're fighting for every morsel 
feast. Everybody can eat. Everybody can eat. And 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 if if I have to be the sacrificial lamb to get to, to hopefully hopefully open up these floodgates, I want to because I, I still talk about the whole overall mission, the whole overall goal for Will Lowry. I can't speak for anybody else. I just want these participation numbers to increase on that competitive space in the junior ranks. When it comes to the the, the minority participation, black and brown participation, again, it's less than two percent. When it comes to these kids playing AJGA, when it's playing to when it comes to playing competitive golf and going into college, how can we collectively come together and increase those participation numbers? That's will stand for. That was, those are my pillars: culture, education, and and uh, an opportunity. That's all I care about. And and I like what you always say about the influencer. There's the two different types that you distinct from. Because yeah. I know community is like so big to you. How do you say it? You have a great way of saying yeah. it. Yeah, there's 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 influencers. There's influencers and there's impact influencers. And 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 I just believe that you know if you if you're an impact influencer. There's, I mean, there's, there's a, there's things that have to be taken account for to be considered impact influence. You have to have empathy, and you have to have compassion. So empathy plus compassion, uh, excuse me, empathy plus action equals compassion, That's right? And so, and and I'm just, I just a firm believer that you know, you know, um, you know, co- compassion is nothing but an emotional response to somebody else's struggle. And I just believe, I'm wholeheartedly believe that these kids. Can really benefit from being in this game because the higher you go, the higher you go up in the game, the more invest. It takes more money. It just takes more money. Yeah. But but the, but the further you can go, reach too. Yeah, you, and, if you can get up there, if you can get up there, you man, you you'd be surprised. You know, again, the opportunity that you make from a business standpoint, you know, and and I say all the time, what golf has done for me, golf has put me in some of the most you know rooms, craziest rooms that I normally wouldn't be in. And that's because I know how to swing a golf club, despite being backwards when I swing it. And upside down. And up, <laughs> upside down. <laughs> but, but yeah, so I, I'm just, I appreciate it from you guys. And, and uh, I hope that we can, you know, make this event really uh, meaningful and memorable, a memorable experience from, from, you know, this is not just for the Will Lowry uh, championship. This is really for all of, I hate to say it, for African-American golf. You know, uh, people of color golf because I, I, I want this thing to really be lasting and and and, um, and talked about in a good way for years to come. Because yeah, if it's bad, well, we'll yeah, about it too. <laughs> to our why are point. you unmuted? God, <laughs> damn. you know what, Henny? You see how Will's laughing right now? This is how this is. We'll we'll get to where me and Will are. You and I. We'll get there eventually. <laughs> right now, Will's laughing. Uh, I'm first glad part, you. No, first I'm part of laugh is for I'm our, glad. For I'm our glad. Part. I'm glad you can tell you shut the hell up. I love this shit. This is perfect. Perfect. You know, perfect. Well, you know what, Henny? Well, I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let well, you. I'm gonna let you have it today. Hey, I feel like well, hold back. on, hold on. I do. I do want to know if you guys had a chance to watch. Did you guys watch uh, Chris Rock? Uh, his um. His uh, special. Doug, you'll face at me. I love you. Yeah. It's all love. Uh, did you, I did not know. You didn't watch. Do you watch Dougie? I went to the show where he was practicing. The the uh, me and Willie went to the to hey, the actual. Hey, Hitty, you can't get no African American than this. I asked this as this Negro. Yes. Did you watch it? He said. He, he said. I he didn't said watch he went, it. He went. But I didn't watch what you. But hold on. Yes. Hold on. Did you go to Baltimore? No, they did. He rehearsed the show in um, that's Palm some, Springs. Hey, you can't get no black into that. Hey, did you go to the, see the, the special? No, I went to his practice. I went to his practice. So I, was at the <laughs> I can't even tell the truth no more, man. <laughs> if you saw it at the practice, Doug, was the end of his set when he talking about Will Smith and Jada? Was it cringy or was it hilarious? Did it had both. It had pieces of both. It give me the percent, give me the percentage though. How much cringy? How much hilarious? Because I was. I probably say it's about seventy five percent cringy, twenty five percent funny. Twenty five percent funny, and it, but it was kind of like, huh? <laughs> hey, he Chris goes, Rock. I'm gonna Chris have Rock, to watch it. Chris Rock had a point, and he came out swinging. He swung and landed. I don't care. These, Granted, Will all Smith right. I had already done that, so he had to swing back. Yes. <laughs> metaphorically, <laughs> metaphorically speaking. <laughs> 
Um, Doug, I have been silencing you throughout Will's AJGA event conversation, but now is your time to shine because we're going to end it on a fun little Dougie tidbit. He's shaking his head. He's like, no, I don't want to play. No, you know what? It's fine. I'll, uh... No, I want to hear what your fun little Dougie tidbit is to finish our episode. Look, we've all been single people. We're all married with children, allegedly. All I know is we've all potentially may or may not have used a dating app in our backgrounds. Tinder now has reported, Will, that they're allowing background checks on people in Tinder. So I, I think it's good, but I think there's I other... I think it's good. I think that's great. But if you're going to go that far, then I think t t Tinder got to have this little Yelp piece. Like, can I get like a star rating for this person <laughs> that I'm about to go out with? I feel like I should be able to read the reviews for... So Uber, so Uber dating. I, feel I was like just gonna say, next. like your Uber rating. I like that. I I think that's next. So call me crazy. You're gonna run background checks. Maybe you should have a star system so I can know. Right. Not me, but people can know. Like if it's worth the investment. Like right. This girl's like, got two and a half uh, stars. She, she didn't do the in the purse dance to pay for the bill. Take her yeah. down a notch. That's She's a bad kisser. Take him down a notch. Boom. Yeah. If, it's, Boom. If, yeah. if, the, if the pictures are over 15 years old, take them down two notches. Yeah, he don't look like his picture. You kicked yeah. off the damn tender for that. All I'm saying is, if you're going to take it a step in, far further and add the background checks, I would like to see the star system be added. I want to see what mm. a three and a half star uh, male or female looks like, depending on how you swipe. That's all I'm saying. But you know what? I, I'm going to add on to this. <laughs> is that I was reading recently there's like a hundred things that are now deemed as right in social etiquette or wrong in social etiquette. Because it's like the modern day social etiquette has moved on so much from what it was in the past that now there's like new rules, if you like. Mm. And one of the new rules for single people was married people being too excited about Tinder and dating apps. And I have to say that I'm guilty of that because, like, if my single friends come to me and they're, like, looking on a dating app, I get so excited. And I'm like, oh, let me see. I want to swipe for you. Oh, what about this? And apparently that's, like, a real social etiquette no-no now. Yeah. That's um, I, I, that's on I, you, I, Henny. We're going we to let you live there. I, I agree. Um, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know that. And I was just I being know. excited I did, and be, be thought I was showing interest in my friend's love life. But... Uh, you know, that's, you know, that's social dope. announcement, just, but that's just, not okay anymore. Look, Tinder was new when I met my wife, and now you can buy subscriptions to have elevated swipes and, and geotag situations. I don't know. That's not what I'm looking after. I got kids to raise. Hey, y'all, we appreciate y'all rocking with us right here, NBC Golf Channel, Beyond the Fairway Podcast, Henny Koyak. She at the players, meaning she a player. This week, Will, I love you, bro. Congratulations, man, on the AJGA event. That's... Dope. I, I want to. I want to do the opposite. Still dating. You, want... you ain't paying for that. You ain't paying for the elevated subscription. Uh... Like what? Only oh got this person. He got two cars.